Like and subscribe right now or you're going to have bad luck for the rest of the week. Airplanes are one of the most common methods of transport now. They come in a variety of appearances, sizes, and wing designs. According to aviation enthusiasts, everyone has different preferences when it comes to airplanes. What one aviation enthusiast might find beautiful may seem ugly to another. So, here we pick out our top 10 most incredible and beautiful airplanes in the world. Functions aside, we've selected these 10 from their timeless designs and reputations of being paragons of grace and flight. Number 1. Supermarine Spitfire Starting off this list is the most beautiful airplane of all time, the Supermarine Spitfire, easily being one of the most well-known aircraft in the history of the British Empire. There is a small pun that an English person may not know an Airbus from the Brighton bus, but will definitely recognize a Spitfire. Basically, the Spitfire is a British single-seat fighter aircraft designed by Reginald Mitchell for the Royal Air Force. The previous versions of the Spitfire, before the bubble canopy was added, had a simple and spare fuselage. The Spitfire's trademark was its wings. The Spitfire claimed to achieve better aerodynamics due to the curved shape along both its leading and trailing edges. The spectacular design allowed the cord length of the airfoil to improve vastly, thus making the wing fatter at the same time. As a result, more space was created for the retracted landing gear as well as for a wide range of guns and cannons. If you are looking for a flying condition Spitfire, it is going to be worth up to 1 to 2 million pounds or 1,416,650 US dollars. Compared to 20,000 to 50,000 British pounds or 28,000 to 71,000 US dollars two decades ago. Number 2. Lockheed Constellation In the late 1930s, air travel was at an all-time high. However, passenger aircraft of the period were far more limited in the number of passengers they could carry and the distance they could cover than today. So, Howard Hughes, with his confidence in the Lockheed Company, went to them and worked with their designer to create a four-engine pressurized aircraft capable of carrying 40 to 60 passengers between Los Angeles and New York in a time span of 8 to 9 hours non-stop. This meant that the plane would have to travel at 300 miles per hour or 493 kilometers per hour, faster than some fighter aircraft of that period. When the plans and ideas were put together, the Lockheed Constellation was born. Later affectionately known as the Connie, it became one of the most classic-looking aircraft of all time. With four huge 2,200-horsepower Wright Cyclone engines, the Connie featured large, slow-turning Hamilton propellers. The large propellers led to a very large landing gear. The most recognizable trait of the Constellation was its triple-tail configuration. The first Constellation went to the military during World War II. On February 15, 1946, the first passenger service of the Constellation Star of California took place. Out of the 856 produced constellations manufactured, only a few are left flying today. Number 3. F-22 Raptor The F-22 Raptor became one of the most crucial tactical fighter aircraft for the American Air Force between 2005 and 2011. 187 units were brought into operation and used for carrying out missions in various parts of the world. Designed by Lockheed Martin Aeronautics, it perfectly combined speed, stealth, and mobility to become one of the most effective military aircraft in the world. It is considered that each F-22 costs around a staggering 150 million US dollars. Crazy, right? At a speed of around Mach 1.5 at altitudes of 50,000 feet or 15,240 meters, it's designed to engage in tactical plans. The passive radar detection system also reduces its chances of being seen by the enemy. A variety of bombs can be carried within its three-weapon base, which gave the American Air Force a significant aerial advantage for sure. Number 4. North American F-86 Sabre For this point, we talk about one of the best and most beautiful first-generation jet fighters in the world, the North American F-86 Sabre. The data that was collected during World War II experiments on the advantages of wing sweep for high-speed flight was used by North American to redesign the F-86. The jet was redesigned into a powerful fighter aircraft with a jet engine, clean and tapered wings, comfort-designed cockpit with spectacular visibility, and power controls. During the Korean War, the F-86 Sabre was the first swept-wing fighter used by the United States which could counter its competitor, the Soviet MiG-15. Not long after, the F-86 became an icon in American air culture and remained integral during the Korean War period, alongside being listed as a competitive jet fighter of that era. Number 5. Hughes H-1 the Hughes H-1 was built in 1935 by Howard Hughes. It has the looks of what a bored kid might draw in the margin of his mathematics book. Utterly simple, yet stunningly extreme. The plane was fitted with a Pratt & Whitney R-1535 twin-row 14-cylinder radial engine, which originated 700 horsepower, but was modified to crank out over 1,000 horsepower. Concerning the exterior design, it has a long nose and a tiny cockpit situated well back toward a high, crafty vertical tail fin alongside a retractable landing gear to increase its speed further. Many innovative technologies were built into the H-1, such as individual machine flush rivets that left the aluminum skin of the H-1 entirely smooth. There is no antenna, access door, or a strut 
along the body of this elegant beauty. Although Hughes thought that the Army Air Corps would communicate with him and make a contract to turn the H-1 into a frontline fighter prototype, the biplane Air Force was not enough to deal with technology this comprehensive. And though there are several replicas of the H-1, there was only one genuine unit of the H-1. Number 6. Vickers VC-10 the Vickers VC-10 is a jet airliner designed and manufactured by Vickers Armstrong's LTD. It is a mid-sized, narrow-body, long-range British jet airliner. It held the record for fastest transatlantic crossing by a subsonic airliner for 41 years. Once, the VC-10 was even faster when compared to DC-8s, 707s, 747s, any Airbus. The reason for this are its wings, which are as efficient as a single engine fighters. The four Rolls Royce Conways were set back by the tail, the parallel stab above them a swoopy piece that superbly evoked the upswept flippers of a diving humpback whale. The VC 10 is also well known for its ability to perform at both high altitudes and temperatures, hot and high. Number 7. De Havilland DH 88 Comet. The de Havilland DH-88 Comet is a British two-seat twin-engine aircraft manufactured by the de Havilland Aircraft Company. When designed, it had little concerns for comfort and convenience and rather focused on speed, to cover the distance between England and Melbourne, Australia as fast as possible, since that was the route of the 1934 Mac Robertson Air Race. Five of them were built, and out of the five, three of them received honorable achievement, such as one finishing first, another finishing fourth, and then the third setting an England to India record. Even though it was made of wood, the British aircraft was the first to pack all the sections of modern high-speed aircraft, stress skin wood construction, landing flaps, reversible undercarriage, enclosed cockpit, and variable pitch propellers into one air frame. Number 8. Beach 17 Stagger Wing Walter Beach, one of the most famous icons in the aviation industry, left the Traveler Company as he wanted to take the biplane design and elevate it to its maximum potential. So, he created the Beach Aircraft Corporation, and the Beach 17 Stagger Wing was their first design. It could do two things very well. The Stagger Wing could easily land in relatively unprepared fields, on roads, and at the same time, it was very fast and efficient to fly. Not unexpectedly, one of the biggest customers was the oil industry during the 1930s. The Model 17 is known as the Stagger Wing because the lower wing is in front of the top wing and that was very unique from that era. The main reason for this was to create a more visible windshield, which was a major problem with the biplane. The other thing this did was that it allowed them to place the wheels with retractable landing gear further forward so that the center of gravity was maintained. This was another first for this aircraft, which increased the structural stability it needed in order to do its mission. In other words, the Stagger Wing is a prime example of vintage function and beauty. Number 9. Northrop T-38 the Northrop T-38 is a two-seat twin-jet supersonic jet trainer manufactured by the Northrop Corporation. They were produced from 1961 till 1972. The Northrop T-38 is based on the Northrop 5. However, the extra cabin length highlights the design's stylish, double-curved, greatly area-ruled fuselage and gives the airplane proper lift and presence. In March 2011, the T-38 reached its 50 years mark as the USAF's advanced trainer. The replacement of the Talon by the Boeing T-7 Red Hawk was announced by USAF in September of 2018. The T-38 was fuel efficient and maintenance friendly and was the only trainer that Thunderbirds ever used as a show plane from 1974 to 1981. In order to get a T-38, you may need to spend around 800,000 US dollars as a civilian owner. Number 10. Boeing 747 at the end, we can't ignore a very common, well-recognized, but incredible airplane, the Boeing 747. It's because of the 747 that flying became economic for everyday people. The jumbo jets are run by four engines and can carry 366 passengers on average and are partly two floors at the front. Boeing decided on the design of the erased cockpit to smoothen the craft to be converted into a cargo transporter due to the impending reality of supersonic travel. Each unit costs around 200 million US dollars to build. A huge figure of 1,557 Boeing 747 have been built, which makes it an incredible workhorse of passenger air travel. Well, that's all for today's video. Thank you for watching. Oh, while you're here, go ahead and click one of these two videos on your screen. See you there!